SSH is a technology that lets you connect in your terminal from one computer to another. I'm gonna install the open SSH server package so that I'll be able to SSH into this Intel Nook server from my MacBook Pro. So sadly, this means that this will probably be the last video that I'm on the Ubuntu desktop environment. The rest of the video will be in my MacBook. And this is cool because I can go afar to a coffee shop wherever and log into my home server, do whatever I need to on it because I've exposed that port on my router that goes directly on port 22222 to my server. Let's install SSH. <clears throat> and now that it's installed, I'm going to run systemctl status ssh. So system systemd is Ubuntu's init system, and that means it is the way that most software gets started on the computer. When I install a package like open SSH server, that's something that I want running on my computer all the time, you know, right after I install it, when I reboot my computer all the time and system D takes care of it. Uh, the, the SSH package was smart enough to include, um, configuration for system D so that right after you install it, it's going to run with systemd and I don't have to worry about starting SSH myself basically ever. And I already see this is the log output from SSH that says it's started up and it's listening on port 22. Now, as I said in the previous video, we're not going to expose SSH on port 22. Hackers often just hit IP addresses on port 22 to try to hack your login to your server. Um, we don't want that. So what I'm going to do is CD to etc SSH. And in this directory, there is the SSHD config that is a file that controls the SSH server on this computer. I'm going to install Vim, which is a text editor I feel comfortable with to edit this file. Uh, Ubuntu comes with a text editor GUI application that you can use if you feel more comfortable with that. So open up this file in Vim and right here on like the fifth line, I am going to change the port that SSH will listen on to 22222. A little bit of security through obscurity. As I said before, I would suggest just pick a random five digit number under like 60,000 and above 2000 for your SSH port number. After I edit the configuration, I do have to restart the SSH server by hand with systemctl restart SSH. And if I run the status command, now I see SSH is running on that port. Switching over to my MacBook, I will now be able to log in to my Nook with my username Eric and password from the Ubuntu system. And since I've already set up port forwarding, I'm just gonna connect to the Nook from, through my public IP address. So Eric, my user, at my public IP address and specify that special port that I set up. 
when you connect to a new computer with SSH, it's gonna tell you that it's never heard of it before. The auth authenticity can't be established. And it's gonna ask you if you want to connect to it. And I'm gonna say yes. And the fingerprint for this server is gonna be stored in my SSH known hosts file on my MacBook. Here SSH is gonna ask me for my Ubuntu password for that Eric user, which I'll put in. And I'm connected. I get a welcome to Ubuntu message, links to relevant Ubuntu documentation, information about the packages that I have installed and if there are any updates for them. And you'll notice my prompt has changed to the one I have configured on Ubuntu. Two more things I'm gonna do to secure my SSH setup. I'm gonna disable password authentication and enable key-based authentication to log onto the server. Key-based authentication is just more secure than password authentication. Passwords, you can have weak passwords and people can brute force attack them. SSH, you basically need someone's private key in order to crack on another server. So I will run the SSH keygen program with a couple of options, including my email address, to create a private and public key pair. It'll ask me a few questions, like where I want the private key file to go, and I want it to go in the .ssh folder under the file name Nook. I don't do passphrases, so I'm just gonna hit enter. And now in my .ssh folder, if I look at what's, what's in here, I have the private key file and the public key. So SSH key authentication works such that I take this public key and put it on my server in a file that is a list of like the allowed people who are okay to log into the computer. And whenever I log into the server, I'll supply my private key. The server matches these up and says, okay, cool. I have a public key that matches this private key. You're cool to log in. Now that I have this public key, I need to get it onto the Nook, and I'll use a program called SCP, which is a way to transfer files from one computer to another over SSH. I'll set the port that it should connect to for the SSH connection, the file that I wanna transfer, and then the username to log in under. And now I'll switch it up and connect to my Nook over the local IP address on my network. And finally, a colon and then the path that I want the file to end up on the server. Boop, enter my Ubuntu user password get a little output from SCP and it looks like it successfully went over the wire. I will SSH onto the Nook, enter my password for the last time. And if I look in my home folder, I have this public key file. Let's check out what is in that file. It's a really long, just one line with a bunch of gobbledygook and my email address. So on the server, we are to put this public key in a very specific spot. And that's in the .ssh folder, in the home folder, inside a file in there. The SSH folder is not there by default, so we have to make it. And we're going to create a file in here, authorized underscore keys, that SSH is gonna look in for the public keys. So I will again take 
the contents of my public key and append it to this authorized keys file. And I should now be able to log in with my public key. Before I do that, I'm going to get back into the SSHD config file, go all the way to the bottom, and set up the configuration to disable password-based authentication. And that includes setting the use PAM configuration to no, challenge response authentication no, password authentication no, and I'll write those changes to the file. Restart the SSH server so those configuration changes take effect. And now if I exit from my server and just try to log in with password-based authentication again, I'm gonna get permission denied. Disabled password authentication. Whenever I wanna log into my server now, I'm going to supply an extra option, dash I, with the path to my private key and that will let me log in with public key authentication.